So there will be a point where uh, I'll break over to my phone and then at the end we'll break back to the desktop version. So today's topic is Arbiter Live um, and Arbiter Mobile. Those are both going to be the public facing uh, platforms that we've got at Arbiter Sports. Our Arbiter Live platform is the first thing that I'll go into. And then we'll go into that Arbiter Mobile platform, which is a fairly uh, new platform um, that we've got um, within the last two years or so. And we've spent a lot of time developing uh, that Arbiter Mobile. And it's not only uh, a public facing platform, but uh, for those of you who are school admins, um, you can log into that Arbiter Mobile app and uh, it'll give you access to the schools that you're an admin at and you'll have certain functions like adding scores, uh, seeing who the officials are, seeing who the event workers are. Um, and uh, very soon you'll be able to make payments from that mobile app. So uh, if you've not downloaded that mobile app today, um, that's kind of the very first thing that I want to mention is go ahead and go to the App Store, uh, download that mobile app, and then as I'm walking you through it, you can kind of be following me. Um, the uh, icon of that app looks like this. There's actually going to be um, two different um, apps when you look up Arbiter Sports in the App Store. One is for our officials, one is for our, our schools and the public. Um, the one for the schools and the public is the one with the red uh, icon like you see here. We're going to start in Arbiter Live though. Arbiter Live is a place for uh, our fans to go access schedules. They can go in and follow teams. Um, if they've got a uh, kid that is on one of the teams at that school, they can go in, choose that uh, specific school and become a follower of that school. Um, followers of schools can, can receive notifications of game changes, um, anything like that uh, that would be associated with that team. To access Arbiter Live, uh, fans can use this ArbiterLive.com uh, link, which would take them directly to this uh, page you see here. However, underneath your school settings, um, underneath your dashboard, you've got this Arbiter Live sub tab. Arbiter Live and our Arbiter Mobile are available to all schools at no cost. Um, each school has a specific URL that is specific to that school. Um, that URL is found underneath your Arbiter Live sub tab right here. And uh, we've got a lot of schools that they'll use this URL, they'll plug it into their uh, school website. And when you hit the athletic page, it actually directs you to Arbiter Live. So this is a, a school specific URL. Um, when we jump into looking up schools in a little bit, you'll see exactly what that would look like. A few other things on this Arbiter Live page. Um, this option right here is to either publish or not publish your schedule on Arbiter Live. Um, on Tuesday, we covered scheduling events and when cre creating events in Arbiter, um, you've got the option to publish or not publish an event. Publishing an event will push it over to Arbiter Live. Not publishing it um, will uh, keep it on your schedule, but won't send it over to Arbiter Live. If you didn't want any of your schedules flowing over to Arbiter Live, um, you could click this button here and uh, anytime a fan went to your Arbiter Live page, it would just say no schedules. So you do have that option um, if you wanted to kind of disable your Arbiter Live page for your school. And then you've also got this team roster settings right here. Um, rosters do flow over to Arbiter Live, but it's kind of like uh, schedules. If you wanted to choose not to send those rosters over to Arbiter Live, um, you can choose um, which rosters not to send. Uh, otherwise, it will default to sending all rosters over to Arbiter Live if you choose to add uh, students to rosters. And if we've got time at the very end, I'll show you how to add students to rosters. Uh, that can be done underneath the eligibility tab. You will add those students um, to your students list and then you can add them to teams. We'll go into that if we've got some extra time at the end. But getting back over to Arbiter Live, if you wanted to use your school specific URL, you can just click here and it'll drop drop you directly to that school's specific page. Or you can use this uh, main page here and look up a specific school. It will search for that school and it will look at what you've 
uh, entered in the search bar and give you a search results based off of that. Um, we're going to list active schools and high schools towards the top of the list, followed by middle schools, um, but always act listing active schools at, on the top of your search results. So that was a recent change we made. Um, the other thing about the Arbiter Live platform is we actually just gave it an entire new up, uh, updated interface. So everything I'm showing you today in Arbiter Live um, was released within the last couple of weeks. Um, we basically went through each page. It's a redesign, new look and feel. We've added a few features and functionalities um, that I'll highlight while I'm going through this, but did want to let you know that uh, this is kind of an updated platform that you're seeing today. So once you find your school, you can click on that specific school and it will drop you into that school's uh, basically page. Um, from there, uh, one of the recent updates we made was the ability to show active or all teams. Um, the criteria be behind active teams is they've got schedules for the current school year. Um, so if a team does not have schedules for the current school year, they wouldn't show under active teams. Um, but if you click show all here, it'll refresh and show you all the teams at that school, uh, regardless if they have schedules for the current school year or not. Um, if they're listed under your team's list uh, in the school dashboard, they would show on this team's list here in Arbiter Live. From here, you can choose a specific uh, sport and level. So I'll go into boys baseball varsity and you get dropped on the team page for that boys varsity baseball team. Um, from here, you've got your, your schedule for that team. If that team has practices listed in their account, those practices would show up under the practice tab. In this particular case, I don't have any practices for uh, this team, but if you did, those would list here just kind of like uh, you see on the schedule page. And then if you've got a roster set up for that team um, and you've got students added to that roster, uh, those students would be listed here in the roster for that specific team. And we'd show their jersey, name, grad year, and position. Jumping back over to the schedule page, um, you can actually click within a specific game. Uh, by clicking within a specific game, it'll give you the game details related to that game, the scores, the teams involved, the records of those teams, um, the location of that particular game or event. Um, if you did need to get directions or uh, a parent of a team needed to get directions, you could click this get directions and it would actually open up Google Maps and take you to this location. Um, if either of these teams had uh, transportation involved in this game, which in this case it doesn't look like they do, but if they did, um, maybe they had the dismissal time uh, added for their team uh, or uh, the departure time, that transportation block would show up right over here next to location. So you'd have a transportation block here, your location block here, and it would show those transportation details. Go back to boys varsity. Um, a few additional things. We've got the results column here where it'll show you a win loss tie and then the result of the game. Um, the status is going to be any like canceled, forfeited, postponed. Um, if anything like that has occurred, you'll see that in the status column. And then this league column is going to be the type of the game. So the tournament game, league game. Um, if it's I think in is non league game. So the league type or the game types will show there. Uh, you've got tournaments listed here. So if you, you had a tournament uh, on your schedule, uh, tournaments, you, you, you'll come to that within that tournament and you'll see the different days of the tournament and the different matchups. Um, and if the results were in, you'd see those results here. Here's that transportation um, tile that I was talking about. Looks like this tournament doesn't have any transportation requests, but if they did, you'd see them right here in this little transportation tile. Um, we've also added the team record um, to the teams page. That was a recent update. Uh, so you'll see that team record listed here. It is for the current school year. Um, one additional change that we'll be uh, making here relatively soon is adding the coach of the specific team to this teams page. So on Monday when we talked about adding your teams, um, we showed you how you can now add a coach to a specific team. 
um, that coach will be displayed on this team's page in Arbiter Live. So if you've not added your coaches to your teams and that was something you wanted to do, those coaches would be displayed on this team's page. Uh, one other thing to point out, if you needed to go to different school years and see those schedules, um, you could um, change the school year here. Um, you may go back to a school year that doesn't have much information. It just kind of depends on when this school started using Arbiter um, and how accurate their schedules were um, in previous years. You've got the print option here um, you, on this schedule page. You can print off the schedule or you can go over to the roster tab and print off uh, your roster. Then finally, uh, the last thing I want to point out on the teams page is the ability to follow a team. So uh, I kind of talked about that at the very beginning of uh, the, the webinar, but you do have the ability to follow a specific team in Arbiter Live. Um, so if you were a uh, actually on that team as a team member, maybe you were a coach, maybe you were a fan, maybe you were a parent of a, a team member, you could come here, click follow. And if you've got an account, you'll log in here. If you do, do not have an account, you can come to sign up. Enter your first name, your last name. And you click sign up. Once you click sign up. Let's see here. I can remember my password here. Oh. All right. So you can manage your subscriptions to specific teams. If we go back to that team we were at. with me here. So we've got our team, Boys Varsity Baseball. So in this case, I'm already unfollowing following it. But here we go. This was if I was a brand new user, I'd created my account. I come in here, I click follow. It's going to ask me the specific role. Um, so you've got athlete, coach, fan, media, parent, or other. And you've got the different alert types, either emails or text messages. The different types of events that you would get those uh, notifications for games or games and practices. Um, when you would receive those notifications, um, when the schedule changes, a reminder before each game. And then if you needed to be emailed the iCal link, you could do so here as well. So you enter all that, enter your phone if you wanted text messages. You click subscribe and it'll say you're now following this team so now you'll see here where you're following and if you needed to you could unfollow and then you could come up here and manage sub subscriptions so if you had a, a student on one team and they um, maybe graduated up to the next team the following year and you wanted to come in and maybe uh, remove your subscription to the JV team and uh, add a subscription to the varsity team, you could come in here, unsub unsubscribe from the JV team, and then add that subscription for uh, the varsity team. So that is kind of Arbiter Live in a nutshell. Um, like I said, it is available to all schools. Um, every school has a Arbiter Live page. Whether your schedule show up on that page um, depends on if you publish your events. Um, or whether all of your events are entered, um, whether by, by an assigner or by the school. So if, if an assigner is not adding events and you wanted them to show up on Arbiter Live, uh, you would need to add those events into your dashboard yourself. And once you did that, um, they would flow to that team's page and your fans would be able to access that. So that's Arbiter Live. Um, if you've got any questions about the Arbiter Live platform, feel free to ask those in the chat. Um, I'm going to transition over to the mobile app now, so uh, bear with me while I transition. Um, give me a couple seconds and we'll get started in the mobile app.
All right, thank you for uh, waiting there. We'll share the screen and go ahead and get started. So the first thing you're going to do is go to that app store, um, like I talked about earlier. I'm going to type in Arbiter Sports. And the very top option here with the red icon is the one you're going to choose. On the second one here is for our officials. So that top option is the one you're going to choose. And you'll choose open or you download that app if you've not downloaded it yet. So I'm going to click open. And then we can come here. Um, the first thing you'd want to do as a school is to come to this profile page. And as a school admin, you have the ability to actually sign into this uh, account on this mobile app. If you were a fan, uh, you would just simply come here to the home page. You could click the search and look up a specific school. And it's going to be kind of just like you would see um, on Arbiter Live, but in a mobile version. Um, so I'm going to show you from a school's perspective today, since most of you on this call are schools. So we're going to click sign in and we're going to use our credentials that we use over in Arbiter. Let's see if I can type these rather fast. To learn my stuff here. All right, so once you log in, um, you're going to see your name appear at the bottom of that profile page, letting you know that you've now logged in. Um, if you needed to sign out, you could just click the log out button down there at the bottom of the page. Um, but now if you jump over to the home page, if you are an admin and once you sign in, you're going to be added to the different uh, campuses that you are listed as an admin for. So if you were uh, an admin at three high schools and a couple middle schools, you would see those added to your home page. Um, if you were a admin at one high school or one middle school, you would see those listed on this home page. Um, that gives you the access to go into that school and we're going to choose a school here. Choose the same one we've been using in Arbiter Live. And from that, you've got your team's list, very similar to what you would see over in that Arbiter Live platform. You can go into a specific team, um, find a specific level, and it's going to show you that schedule. So looks really similar to that Arbiter Live, just in a mobile version. You've got your tournaments listed, your different games. Um, but a couple things here that you do have the ability to do as a school that's logged in is add the scores. So you'll see this future game listed here where a score has not been added and you've got the blue add score button. You'll come here, click add score. And you can come in here, type the scores for the different teams. Click save score. And the score that you've added in this app will now flow over to the other Arbiter platforms. So it'll flow over to that Arbiter Live platform. It'll flow over to your school uh, dashboard. Um, it would flow over to the officials end, the assigners end. Um, so you, you've got that ability now um, on the mobile app to add and edit those scores for games. So if, if an official did add the scores and you needed to go and edit them, you would also have that ability to always come back into a game where you already see scores. Click right here and edit. You could edit those, click save, and you would be good to go. Now let's see if we can find another game here. Um, another thing you've got the ability to do as a school is see the officials and the event workers on games. So if we look right here on the game details related to this game on August 6th, we see the officials listed down here as well as the event workers. From there, you've got a few different functions that you can do. You've got the ability to both email and text message these officials and event workers. Um, if you had multiple officials listed here or multiple event workers listed, you could do so in uh, mass by clicking one of the 
icons you see listed on this page, or you could actually go into the profile of one of the specific officials or specific event workers, and it'll open up their profile, and then you could notify just that specific official if you did not need to notify every official or every event worker on that game. So clicking the icons from this game details page would be include all officials or all event workers, but if you wanted just a specific one, like I said, you'll click on the individual person and it'll open up their profile. You can add this event directly to your calendar by using the add to calendar button at the very bottom. Um, if you needed the site details, um, you can click the location here and it will take you to uh, Google Maps. And then in the top right corner of this game details page, if you click there, you've got the option to either send to different people or post on maybe social media, send someone a text message, um, basically sharing those game details. So up in the right top hand corner is that share game option. So that is add and editing scores. That's seeing your officials on the game, seeing your event workers on the games, and sharing those game details. One thing that we will be adding relatively soon into this mobile app for those of you who are school admins is the ability to pay both the officials and the event workers. So if you've not downloaded that app, that's another reason why you want to go in, download that app today so that when we do release that, um, you do have that ability now. Um, whether you're sitting at a stadium and you wanted to pay the football officials or sitting courtside and you wanted to pay the basketball officials, instead of having to go back to your desktop and click that pay button, um, you'd now have that ability um, on your mobile app by using this uh, Arbiter Sports app. So that is kind of the uh, overall team page. You also have uh, rosters that flow over to the mobile app. So uh, just like in Arbiter Live where you were able to see the roster, you've got that roster in the mobile app. Um, one difference about the mobile app versus uh, Arbiter Live, uh, you, we currently do not have the ability to follow a specific team in the mobile app, but you can favorite a specific team. So if you were wanting those uh, game notifications and things like that, uh, Arbiter Live would probably be where you'd want to sign up for now. Um, we do hope to have those notifications in the mobile app eventually. Um, but for now, you can follow a team, and following a team does put them on your home page. Um, if you were a fan or someone other than a school admin, um, or if you were a school admin and you had a student at a different school, um, you can go in and favorite that school. And anytime you logged in, you'd see that school listed under your home page. You just wouldn't have those same capabilities uh, of adding editing scores or seeing the officials on those games. You would just see those uh, games as a fan versus a admin at that school. So that is Arbiter uh, Mobile. Uh, I'm going to jump back over to the desktop version now. If you've got questions about either Arbiter Live or Arbiter Mobile, um, please ask those in the chat. And when I jump back over, we'll be answering any questions that are asked in the chat. Thank you. Right, it doesn't look like we've got any questions right now. Um, I did mention if we had some time at the end and we didn't have any questions, I'd go into uh, showing how to add students to rosters. Uh, so the first place we'll start is over here underneath the eligibility tab. And you can either add individual students by clicking the plus new student or coming here to the drop down and importing your students. Um, I would suggest probably going the route of importing students. It would probably save you a lot of time. But the first step in adding students to a roster is uh, importing or adding those students to the students list. Um, once you add them to the students list, you can come in um, and you can actually designate them to student teams here. Or you can come here underneath your resources and teams 
find a specific team. And you've got this roster tab. And you can come in here and add any players that you've added as students to the students tab as um, players to this specific team. So first step, adding those students to the student tab. Second step um, is coming into the specific teams and you can then create the rosters uh, using those students you've added to the students tab. Once those students have been added to those rosters, um, they will display in those public platforms that we did just show you on this call. All right, well, we will wrap things up from there. Uh, thank you everyone for joining today's webinar. Um, we will be sending out a recording uh, of these webinars to anyone who registered for the webinars, as well as posting these on our YouTube channel. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and we appreciate you guys and have a good rest of your school year.